Awo, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. And this is the 14th Sabbath. The 14th Sabbath that's called in the Hebrew, Vayera, or Vayera, 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 Vayera. And that's the Hebrew for, and I appeared. It's the first word that Ha Elohim, Baruchu, the true and the living God, spoke in this particular kufal or portion known in the Hebrew as a parsha, Bamarin as a kufal, in Exodus chapter six, verse three. Now this is the fourteenth uh, weekly uh, Torah portion or the Torah reading, the Orit uh, Nibab, as you say Bamarinya, the Orit Torah Nibab reading. And in the annual Hebraic uh, cycle of the Torah readings, the Orit um, uh, Minbab, Nebaboch, and it's the second in the book of Exodus, the second reading in the book of Shemot or Exodus. Now it constitutes Exodus chapter 6 verses 2 to Exodus chapter 9 verses 35. Now we as black Hebrews, as elect Arastafari, who are in the diaspora or still in exile or spiritual Egypt, um, mystery Babylon, so forth and so on, we who are outside of our promised land, um, we read this in the 14th Shabbat or the 14th uh, Sabbath, the Senbet, after what's known as the Simchat Torah. And generally, um, that is... uh, January, in the month of January, which now is January, and this is the the Sabbath, would be the eve of Friday, January 20th, to the eve of Saturday, January 21st, uh, 2012. 2012. So, now, the reason why we have um, Egypt... You know, would you see the, the, the Gaza or the Agazi Plateau, a portion of the Agazi Plateau before you, is because we are, this book concerns in Egypt. This book concerns certain events, significant events in um, Egypt, as well as we're, we're going to touch on the, the, the burning bush. There's the burning bush. Um, no doubt you recall that. Now, there's a very interesting connection between our Ethiopic, um, our Ethiopic calendar, and let's bring up. Uh, this is one rendition of uh, a Moses um, from some old Renaissance, like European art. But clearly, we can see the Ethiopic uh, features and the resemblance when we come out of the stereotyping of black people. Now, this particular parsha or portion, let's touch a little bit more on this particular parsha or portion. Now, this is from uh, the Royals Be Wise album cover, and we thought this is an excellent album cover to um, utilize in these readings and feedings concerning ancient Egypt. And let's bring this down so you can see the, the, the top part where it says the... Royals. Now, as we mentioned before, the 70 that went down in the 13th portion that went down to Egypt, Yaakov, with Jacob and with his family, that they were and became the royal, the royal family of Egypt. We're going to touch on the Exodus. We're going to touch on the the mythological or the mystir, mystir, the mystery of Exodus, which they say is mythological, has been preserved in the parables and the proverbial uh, verbal hieroglyphics within the scriptures, within the word. And this is why we, we, we pray for the spirit of discernment. So even though this is in the Bible and we read it in the Bible, we need the spirit of discernment and wisdom. We pray for wisdom to be able to properly interpret, to properly interpret the scriptures and properly interpret the word. Now, this is from the Israel's B.Y. So let's now touch on this particular parasha. We're in the 14th um, parasha or the 14th um, sabbatical reading and feeding what we know as our Arastafari 
Sabbath studies, sabbatical studies, and I am Aras Yadinos Tasari, otherwise known as Wendem Yadin, or others will say Ras Iadonis speaking. Now, let's bring this up here, the Ethiopian calendar. And we think it's important for us to touch on certain corresponding um, events in the Ethiopian calendar. Now, what you're looking at comes from the Ethiopia Kingdom of God um, ministries, and we're going to bring it in so you can see the fullness of the calendar before you right here. All right, so you can see the fullness of this particular calendar. Now, let's go, let's, let's get, a, get a good overview because we need to be able to count our days and we need to be able to tell time in order to recognize and even see and properly interpret the signs of the time. Now, much of this is Bamarinya and the Gutters, and this basically says up here, um, who let she, you understand, know um, this is the who let she arat, or 2004, or Haya Arat Meheret, the year of mercy, the Warichter, or the month of the Warichter, the month of Ter, and Ter, the month of Ter is from January to February 2012, and the year is the Zemena Johannes Owen Gelawi, so we're in the year of John. Now, this is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Bamarinya, Ehud, Senyo, Mag Senyo, or Mak Senyo, Rebu, Hamus, Arb, and Kedame, which is the Sen Beta Ehud, or Sen Beta Yehuda, which is the Sabbath of uh, Judah or of the Jews, to say of the Hebrews, or the Old Testament Sabbath, the seventh day, which is very, very important. Now, this is, these are the, the Ethiopic ciphers here. This is, this is, and, who led, source, arat, amis, sidis, sabat, cement, zet, ein, aser, aser, an, aser, who led. Now, we're going to look at these two days, because this is what the, this present Shabbat, or Senbet, covers these particular two days, and we want to touch on why, why this is, why this is significant, and why this is important. Now, hopefully, you can follow along with uh, the sabbatical um, Sabbath house readings, the updated Sabbath house readings, which is at www. L O J, L O J um, Society www. L.O.J. Society. Now, let's see if we can um, um, bring this up right here, the Sabbath, um, the, the Sabbath house readings. Let's just look up Sabbath right here on our, on our desktop, and we'll bring that up. But let's touch on, let's touch on this right here. Now, we give thanks to the Nabura Id um, Arimius uh, Kabeda uh, Wode Yesus and the Ethiopia Kingdom of God Ministry, um, who utilize this particular logo and symbol, which we also utilize because it represents prophetically what's going on here. Now, this is Ethiopia, Ethiopia. This is the line of Judah, and if we look at this whole symbology, there's much in this particular symbol. This is Ethiopia in Psalm 68, verse 31. Ethiopia stretching forth her hands to God. Now, Ethiopia, the covenant with the elect of Ethiopia, the connection with Ethiopia and Israel is very important, or with holy Ethiopia and Israel is very important. Now, no doubt many of you already understand that, prophetic and divine connection where where holy Ethiopia, as it says in um, Amos 9 and 7, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So there is a prophetic connection and divine connection between holy Ethiopia and between the righteous Africans. And the key word there is holy. The key word there is righteous. In other words, those who are 
Ethiopians or Africans, but who are in the righteousness of the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. That's the key right there. That's what makes those Ethiopians and Africans our brothers, our sisters, and our mothers. Now, this is the prophetic of Ethiopia stretching forth our hands to God, and we see here the rainbow. You understand? Or the Aranguade, the beach, uh, and the K, or the green, the yellow, and red. And these are also very significant um, colors, both in the spectra and both according to the true understanding of the mystics or the metaphysics. Now, this is the line of Judah, symbol symbolizing the, the kingdom of David that was renewed in Ethiopia during the time of. King Solomon of Jerusalem and the Queen of Sheba. What's very interesting is that many um, so-called Christians or, or European or Western Christians, um, the scholars and the Pharisees and the scribes, they understand that there is that positive testimony and claim of Ethiopia. But for various spurious reasons, they try to reject or try to um, minimize the significance of the Beta Israel or Israel, ancient Israel, Ethiopia, Ark of the Covenant, and, and divine monarchy connection because if they accept the truth of it, then the point is that they are in rebellion to earth's rightful ruler, which is basically where we are at in this prophetic time. But we wanted to show you this right here because let's bring up the map or the, um, let's bring up the calendar, the Kenak Otat Regen. So here's where we're at. This, this is Friday, Arb, Friday, Asra'and, according to the Warcha Tur or the month, the Ethiopic month of Tur which is January to February. This is the 11th, but in the Western is the 20. So we have 20 right here. This is 20. For Asara Hulet or the Ethiopic uh, um, date of the 12th, which is tomorrow or the Saturday, is the 21st. Now some significant connection, and we thank our... Um, um, uh, mother-in-law for reminding us that uh, Saturday or tomorrow is actually Gita Bekana Zegalila, the third, or Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, and the the wedding at Kana of uh, Galila or or Kana of Galilee, where our Lord Adonai turned water into wine and it furthermore says here this is a little bit fine print down here but perhaps what we can do is zoom in since we gave you an overview of it so let's zoom in on this particular significant this significant portion let's get a, a tighter shot of it so we can okay I think one more would be would be good right here okay very good. All right. So maybe a, a slightly less. Okay. Let's see if we can go 225. 225 of magnification. Okay. This, this, this will have to suffice right now. So we already know this is Friday and Saturday. So this will be Thursday right here. But we're going to focus on Friday. Which, which, which is today for the 14th sabbatical reading and feeding that is known as Wayera, Wayera, and I appeared, or Bamarinya, according to the royal Amharic, it is known as Tagaletahu, Tagaletahu, in other words, and I appeared. And when we touch on the Gutas, the Gutas is even a a, a much more tighter connection between we can see how the how the Hebrew and the Ethiopic are very close relatives and they are basically family part of the Afro Semitic um, family of uh, languages but 
be that as it may, this particular Sabbath, the 14th Sabbath, is called uh, Wa'ira in the Hebrew, and I appeared to Galat Uhu, and I appeared. And we're going to get into that particular scripture. In fact, let us do this just to begin this particular Sabbath off correctly. And we're in Orit Zesa'at chapter 6. In chapter 6 and roughly verse uh, 2 and 3 concerns us right here. This is, this is the portion, the reading and feeding for this present time right here. So... What we have here, Bessem Awulam and Fiskadusa Hadwam Lak, we're in the Orit Ze Se'at, or the Torah, Orit Ze of Se'at, of the coming out, which in a translation can be the Torah of Exodus, also known as Shemot. Verse 2 says, Egeziabihirin, Musain Tenagaro, Alohim. In a Egeziabihirin, and God, the true and living God, spake to Moses, Muse, the head of the fraternal order of Lewawian, and said to him, I am the Lord, or I am, Egeziahir, the sustainer, Yahweh. He who is, who he is. Or Ehyeh Shara Ehyeh. Then he says here, in verse Kut El Source, or Shores, it says, Le Abraham, Le Yisahak, Le Yaik Obim, Hulun in the Nietzsche, Lam Laka, Tegalet, who Negar again, Sime, Egezi, Abiheram, Allah Tawak, Alacho, Wimmanaber, and I appear to Abraham, to Yishak, or Isaac, and to Yaikob by the name of God Almighty, which the Ibrahist in the Hebrew is El, El Shaddai, or Hail Shaddai, El, El Shaddai, God Almighty, right? He says, by God Almighty, Hulun Bamarinya, Hulun in the Michel or Yemichel Amlak, Hulun Chai Amlak, but by my name, Jehovah, or Yah, by my name Yahweh was I not known to them so this is the key significant verse right here and this is the key significant word right there now in this particular program allows us to teach this a little bit a little bit clearer here because of the Strong's the Strong's uh, the King James Strong's number so let us go to appeared Let's go to the word appeared, and I appeared, 7,200. You see that there? So when we click on the 7,200, we have the word, let's, let's uh, bring this over. We have the word re'ah or ra'ah, ra'a, really more correctly pronounced, it'll be re'ah, re'ah, re'e, re'e. They have ra'au. In, in, to help one's learning, but this is in the modern force Hebrew. We get the proper um, vowel pointings for biblical Hebrew through the study of the ancient Ethiopic or Gutis. That's just a, a point there, hopefully, for the scholars um, presently and to come. But it's a 7,200 word. So this is the primitive root, primitive root to see, literally or figuratively, in numerous applications, direct and implied, transitive, intransitive, and causative, advise self to appear, to approve, behold, ex um, with uh, certainty, consider, discern, make to enjoy, have experience, gaze, take heed, ex very much indeed, or such and such joyfully, low, to look on one another, one on another, one upon another, out upon, up upon, mark, meet, be near, perceive, present, provide, regard, respect, for, like to cause, to know, to see, another, to shoe, shoe oneself, the sight of others, um, to spy or espy, to steer, to steer at, surely, to even think, to view, visions. Now, it's interesting that the word, um, Re'ah or Ra'ah, Ra'ah, 
as we get back here to the top of it, which part of it is why why red? Now let's see if we can do this right here in our in a, in another related um search engine that we have here. We have used this already. This is the word program. And so if we go to Exodus, let's go to Exodus, right? And let's go to Exodus chapter 6 and let us go to the third um verse. Right, and this is the third verse right here. You can see that's the Hebrew. You understand that's the Hebrew right there, right? And we have the word right here. Here's the wa a ra a ra a wa ra wa ra This is it. This is the word from the Hebrew, right? Now, if we scroll up and 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 go this way with our study. And this is what's so very interesting and very good. There's these programs that that are are available and around that we can utilize to help us in our studies and to redeem and to maximize the time. Now some of these we're gonna post on our website and some of you can find out there. But um you know the the harvest is ready but the laborers are few. So you know, with our limited resource and, and, and limited, um, you know, with the limitations, we're doing what we can, and we pray that more of you are sent into the vineyard and that these teachings of his majesty will um, help equip and basically prepare a new generation, a new people, as it was with the Israelites after 40 years with Joshua or Yasu, there was a new people who were prepared to go. Now this thing keeps keeps passing by here. Let's, let's scroll it down one more time. We want to click on the word appeared. Here we go. Now you see this? This comes up right here. Appeared. So it's showing us this in the Hebrew right here. And it's basically the same, the same definition. And we click on it, it's going to come to the bottom down there. And let's see if we can um, get a you know, get a full page on that. Very good. Now you can see the Hebrew. You can see it. You can see it in the Hebrew, right? The ra'ah, ra'ah. Now, bamarinya. This is uh, and is is the word arai, which means the vision, as or revelation, the vision. A very interesting scripture came to mind a little bit earlier. In, uh, in, in, in a reasoning. Let's just show you this in full context right there. And um, it was concerning uh, a verse from scriptures where it said, um, like, where there is no vision, you understand, where there is no vision, the people perish. Let's see if we still have it. Um, on board right here, where there's no vision, the people perish. Oh, here it goes right here. It's from Metaph and Misale, which you would know as the book of Proverbs. The Metaph and Misale, Metaph and Misale, and it's chapter 29, verse 18. So take that down, chapter 29, verse 18. Um, Bamarinya and Demilo says, Rai, this is that word, Rai, vision, Rai by Nur Hizb Meren Yehonal. Hagin, Yemiat Abuk, Agin, Yetemeseganano, Yetemeseganano, Yetemeseganano. It says um, that, and you probably have heard this before, many have said that um, these attribute this to um, different personalities, but Really, before all of them, this was an ancient wisdom that in Solomon's Proverbs, which even much of it comes from even old and ancient wisdom that was preserved with the wise, because this, this is the wealth of the wise. So uh, all these Proverbs, did Solomon make them up? No, but he preserves these ancient wisdom, and this wisdom still applies today because the wise are the wise and the fools are the fools. But here it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. 
Did you get that right there where there's no vision? Now, what's interesting about this 14th um, Torah portion, there's a few correspondences here that we'd like to share, but we'll do what we can and hopefully we'll um, supplement where and what we need to. It says, where there is no vision, where there is no ability to see the divine and to see the true vision, the people perish. Bamarinya in the Amharic, it, there's, a, there's a little more detail here. In other words, where there's no vision, meren yehona, the people live loosely. The people live like in a libertine way, like a do what thou wilt way. So where there's no vision, people tend to do whatever they please. You know, they do whatever they like. But still, that's to the destruction of the people. The people will still perish by and by. But he that keepeth the law. Now, law right here in the proper context is the Torah. You understand? It says, Happy is he, Bamarinya Yete Mesegeneno. He is praiseworthy. He is praiseful. He is one who is worthy of praise, one who keeps the the law. Now, we just clicked, you saw we clicked down here, 4851, the Hebrew 4851, and those who are um, seriously about the studies, take down these key numbers, like of these key words, and look them up for yourself, the H8451, Tol, Tau, Ra, Torau, Torau. Bamarinya says, it says, Hug, because Hug, you might know it as Hak. Hak, as in the Arabic and the other Shemitic languages, means truth in that sense. It's said to mean like truth. So the Hak or the Hug in Bamarinya, it means law even from the from the Gutters, right? But this is Torah. But now when we study this from the Hebrew now, Torah, the Torah from the 3384, it says a precept or a statute a precept or a statute, especially the Decalogue. Deca is the the Greek for ten, and log or logos means words or logic, the ten points of logic or the ten keys of logic, the so-called ten commandments, the Decalogue, really the ten words, Decalogue, right? The Ashartek Alat. Or the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch. Some uh, Pentateuch here means five books, which contains or is overall called Torah. So we have two nuances of meaning. One, the ten words. Other says the Pentateuch or the five books, right? But now here you see the key word law. That now connects it with the Ethiopic and the Royal Heart. It's law. It's truth. It's, 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 it's verity. Now, the reason why this is important, because we think that this is um, significant before we get into this particular teaching right here, some of these were, you know, you get some ideas, and you look it up, and, and they seem disconnected at first, but if you strive with it, if you don't give up, you know, if you continue in the, you know, in the happy times and the sad times, mm -hmm. and you can only do that when you have a vision. That's why it says that that the people that don't have a, a vision, you know, the people that don't have a vision perish. But he that keepeth the law is, is, is happy. Not just happy, but that one is praiseworthy. You know what I'm saying? That one is, is, is given thanks and, and is also worthy of thanks, because those who do not keep the law, you understand, are evildoers, whether they know the law in the Bible or whether their own hearts deny the truth of the law. In other words, it's not just written in the book, but these are things that are, should be inscribed on in our own hearts. We have the book to remind us. Now, before we go too far into that, let's go back to the calendar for a moment. And these two days. I say two days, but in the Sabbath calendar, these two days are one day. Now, if 
before we go there, we want to bring up a little visual. Let's just bring up this visual for you, because we think the visual will um, better better explain it, um, or will help to explain what we're about to read and translate from them hard. What you're looking at before you right here is uh, Ethiopic style uh, painting. Um, and what's featured before you is uh, Philip Philippos, or the Apostle, the Hawaria Philippos, or the Apostle uh, Philip, and the Ethiopian eunuch that we find the story and the evidence of it in Acts. We can document it, in other words, document it in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. This is the reason why we say that um, the Ethiopians, those African black people, those Afro-Shemitic people are the first on record to follow in the ways and continue to follow in the ways of the Moshiach. But we have direct evidence in Acts of the Apostles. So here, this is most likely the Ethiopian eunuch. And this is Philippos, this is the driver, and now right here is the baptism of um, the Jandaraba, or the Ethiopian eunuch, by Hawaria Philippos, or the Apostle Philip. Now, a closer, a closer, a, a, a close-up of the baptismal scene, let's see if we have it right here, Philip and the Ethiopian um, eunuch. So you can see this full front and center. Because we need these, uh, these are like teaching tools. We need these teaching tools as well. So here we have the Ethiopian eunuch being baptized by um, the Apostle Philip. And we have the documentation in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. Now, Pay attention to chapter 8, verse 37, because in many of these new um, Bibles, in many of these new Bibles, the NIV and others, they put the, the 37th verse into dispute. They say it wasn't there in older manuscripts. And what we want to do um, briefly right here is go to this um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 37. And it's a very significant word. It's, in fact, is part of our Shema. It's, it's the New Testament portion of our Shema. The Old Testament is um, here, O Israel, Shema Yisrael, uh, Yahweh, Eloheinu Yahweh Ahad. We find that documented in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. That's the Shema. And we touch on it a little bit more within um, book 1 of the Gospel of, of Him. But when we go to verse 37, this is what the, the evildoers and, and the Antichrist are trying to put in dispute and trying to actually erase a lot of parts out of the Bible or say that in their faulty um, versions or perversions, this verse is not found. Because after the whole scene that we have between Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, we come to this particular part right here. Verse 37 is, is necessary to, to preface it. It says that men gedin siheidu wada wukha darasu. Janda darab bawun ineho wukha indalat emek yamiya kalek karain mindurno ala. And as they went on their way they came to a certain water. They not name what this water was, but they came to to water. In other words, water wicha derasu, and the eunuch said, "Janda derabawim, see in neho. Here is water in neho wicha. What doth hinder me to be baptized?" And dalat amek yemikalakalain minderno, minderno, allo. Now, that preface it. Now, what they're trying to say, these new Bibles, they're trying to take away the Ethiopian testimony. They're trying to say that Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 37, is not found in their so-called. They try to deceive you, say, in, the, in older manuscripts. No, in the older 
manuscripts which they want to say is the right manuscripts, but we know that this verse does exist, and it's the only thing that connects the story. They're trying to take out this verse. And what does this verse say? Philippe Olsen, remember, there's a question asked. There's a question asked. And Philippe Olsen is now going to answer it. But these antichrists and these false brethren and so-called Christians and other translators in their new Bibles are trying to say that verse 37 does not exist. And we'll later on show you evidence. And if you have any of these NIV and other Bibles, you, and you read the verse, you might see a footnote or something where they'll tell you um, omit from ancient manuscripts or whatever like that. I don't know what false um, manuscripts they have because in the older manuscripts in the Ethiopic, this verse is there and in Seretic, the you know, I mean, Septuagint it's, it's there. But anyway, Philippe Olsen, Befitsuma Lebe Bitamin Tefek Adoal Allah Melison, Iesus Christos, Ye Egiziavi Her Lij in the Hone Amnalo Ale. And Philip said, if thou believest, or we know, if you bitamin, bitamin, if you admit as truth with all thine heart, befitsum libih, in a complete, with a complete, not half-heartedly, befitsum, bepaitum, befitsum libih, bitamin, if thou admit with thine heart, or thy, with all thine heart, or with thy complete heart, Thou mayest tefek adoral alo that it is permitted to you. You can be baptized. Nothing prevents you from being baptized if you would admit with a complete heart, not half-heartedly, not doubtingly, but with a complete heart, or as one say, a perfect heart. And he answered and said, Melusom. He answered and said, or he answered. I admit, here you have B-L-I-E, but really, I amen, amen in the Hebrew, I admit that Yeshua HaMoshiach is the Bain HaElohim, is the Son of God. Jesus Christos, Ye Egeziavi Her in the Hone Amnalo. So we have the Amen here and the Bita Amen, the Bita Amen. Amen, the Amen, not be like Eve, but the Amen. I Amen, I admit as truth. I accept this as the truth. So here he says, because remember, the Ethiopian eunuch is a Hebrew. He's a Hebrew. He's, he's returning from Jerusalem. From the high holy days, he's reading the the the, the prophet uh, Yeshayahu or Isaiah or Isaiah, Tinbite Isaiah. He's reading the prophet Isaiah. You see, it's not like he went to a bookstore just hey, I'll get the new book by Isaiah. No, he's a Hebrew. He's returning from a high holy day. He's t returning from a high holy festival. You understand? As a Hebrew, but now he's hearing of the Mashiach. He's hearing of the Messiah, and perhaps one, perhaps he, he might have been one who was in the upper room. If not in the upper room, he had heard from others in the upper room. Could we see that there's a gathering of Hebrews, of Israelites, we can say, from various different countries because these were those who were in exile as we, so-called African-Americans, blacks in the West, are also in a state of exile. Now, what does this have to do? with this right here. Now, we want to give you that, that basic uh, um, background or really the foreground because it will better explain what we're about to touch on right here. And this is these two days from the Ethiopian calendar for 2004, the Ameta Meheret, which is this current calendar from an Ethiopic perspective or from the Ethiopic church perspective. Today, the Friday going into the Saturday, from the eve to the eve, that's when the Senbet is, from the eve to the eve. So from Friday evening, which is the Asara And, Asara And of Warche um, Tur, or the month of Tur, it says, Be'ale As Ter Iyo, Wetimket. Now, this is the festival of the 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 causing to be seen, asterio, the asterio, the asterio, 
Now, if you look at this part of the word, ri'iyo, ri'iyo, ra'i, wa'ira, this 14th sabbatical. Remember, we had a hit with Friday the 13th and the 13th Sabbath portion, Shimo. Now, once again, we find a similarity between the Ethiopic um, faith, you understand, of Christ, when we look in this calendar, and the Hebraic or the Judaic, in this key word, the ri'iyo, to be seen, the vision, the apparent, and I appeared to Galetahu, and I appeared from the significant portion of scripture that we have um, here. Let's see if we can bring this up right here um, again, where it says that, and he appeared to, to um, Abraham, to Yishak, and to Yaakob by the name El Shaddai, but he did not, was not known as, as Yahweh to them, that he appeared by the name of, or he was known as God Almighty, or El Hail Shaddai, and this is the verse that opens this particular portion, and we touched on this a little bit just a, a moment ago, to get to who, and then we looked at the Waira, the, the Vaira, the Waira, and we looked at the the root of this particular um, word right here. This is this is right here. We have um, ra'a, ra'a, ra'i. Then we have this link right here with the calendar for Friday to Saturday from the ancient was commemorated by the true church of Ethiopia, the Ale Asterio Wetimket. And so the 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 festival of like epiphany or being seen, the the appearing, the festival of the appearance where Timket and the baptism. Then it gives us this footnote here from the Bura Id Remias Kabedawode Yes, who says it chop Yawil Janderba Abema Lake. So now a name has been associated with the unnamed eunuch, Ethiopian eunuch of Abe Malek. And it goes on to say, Bek Dase as a lotu, yet imk at a wens a yek omelet, yet a gualetua tabo to washa kahen, a tilku wode yesus. Right? Wode yesus. Now we'll touch on some of that as well. It's interesting because they said that the Ark of the Covenant was hidden in the cave, and here is, is speaking um, somewhat to that. Now, so here's the key for the beginning. And at the beginning of this Sabbath, uh, the first part of the eve, now we're moving to Asra Hulet, which is the 12th of the month of uh, January to February or the 21st of January. And here it says, Gita, or the Adonai, the Lord, the Master, Bekana Ze Galila Sarg, Bekadist Inatu Fekad. Yemejameria ta amurun yasayebet lika melaikt mikael. The basic Targum is that the Lord Adonai was at Kana or Kana be Kana. And remember Kana Bosom? You know what Kana Bosom is? All right. Be Kana Zegalila Sarg. He was at the wedding or the marriage at Kana of Galilee. Be Kana Zegalila. And here it says, Bekadist in the holy and not to, in it, by his holy mother's fekad, or permission, or will, we can say, fekad, Yemejamaria, the first ta'amrun, the first miracle, Yasayabet, um, he, showed, he showed in this the first miracle. And this is also known as the Lika Melaikt uh, Mi. Kael. This is known as as for the archangel Michael. Now, why is this significant with this particular sabbatical um, reading and feeding? So we have two particular things: the, the 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 baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch, you understand, which is the the eleventh or uh, the Friday, which begins the senbet, this present fourteenth um, sabbatical connected with the marriage or the turning of water to wine. 
Now, we wanted to give you that because that's part of our, our faith. We're learning these things, even ourselves, and being reminded of it. But this portion now, right here, that we are in, if we go to the Shemot, no doubt you recall the book, the Shemot book, we showed it in the previous video, um, that's based on some of the, the um, information out on the Internet, particularly Wikipedia. It explains to us the summary is only there's only one really part to the summary there's only you know like normally there's some different portions usually like i think last um last uh the 13th there were let's just go right here there were seven portions there was the affliction in egypt there was baby musa there was musa and median there was the call of musa there was a circumcision on the way there was a meeting of the elders and then we have musa before their own. So some of the things that um, we have touched on before, just to remind ones, we have the burning bush. You understand this this beautiful um, um, painting and picture, which I think accurately, you know, gives a good visual descriptor. You know, uh, gives a good visual a visual. A visual, we'll get on the kind of, let's see, it's on who I give a good visual descriptor, description of um, what took place in the 13th portion. You understand? In the 13th portion. Now, here, we won't go through this and we'll get into a little bit more detail, but let's just give you um, a kind of overview. So, we, we, we now have that was the, the revealing Ehia Shara Ehia, and now here we have um, Muse. And remember, Muse is is to go down to um to Egypt, right, for to free his people. So here's the overview that Ha Elohim spoke to Musa, spoke to Moses, identified himself as the God of the patriarchs or the God of the Hebrews. The God of the Hebrews. And that's very significant. Many kind of gloss over the fact that he calls himself the God of the Hebrews. Why is that so significant? He didn't say the God of Israel even at this point, but he says the God of the Hebrews. Many have not really recognized what's the connection there. And acknowledge hearing the moaning of the Israelites. So the Most High reveals himself. He identifies himself as the God of the patriarchs. He acknowledges hearing the Shema, that God even Shema's. He even Shema's. He even hears. And he heard the moaning of of the Beta Israel, Exodus 6, chapter 6, verses 2 to 4. Now, Ha Elohim instructed Musa to tell the Beta Israel, to tell the Israelites that, that God, Ha Elohim, would free them, that he would free, free us. Not no new Egyptian legislation, not no Egyptian civil rights, or no fear seeming Egyptian politicians, but that Ha Elohim, that Jah, Rastafari would free and is freeing us and make them Jah's people and make them Yah's people and bring them to the Tesfayitu Midrit or Midr, the promised land, Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. But the Israelites, the Beta Israel, would not listen. How, how ironic is this? But the Beta Israel wouldn't listen. It's like he came to his own and his own received him not. Exodus 6 and 9. Now Ha Elohim told Moses, Musa, the true and living God, told Moses to tell Pharaoh. Now we're about to go to Pharaoh, all right? So now we have have this, the, the royals. Now we're going to have Moses going to Pharaoh or to Pharaoh, right, to tell Pharaoh, the White House, the government, the federal government of Egypt, to let the Beta Israel, let them niggas, let those slaves, let those blacks go. But Moses, Musa, he complained that Pharaoh, that Pharaoh would not heed. He's not going to listen. You understand? He's not going to listen to a man who has a speech impediment. This is what Musa, what Moses says. And there's an interesting response from Yahweh in that portion at Exodus chapter 6, verses 10 to 12. Now, 
when you're looking at the scriptures, chapter 6, in this Sabbath, this 14th sabbatical, Waiyara Tegaletahu, you will find that at this point the text interjects a partial, there's a partial genealogy. There's a partial genealogy of Reuben, Simeon, and finally Levi that includes Moses and his family, Exodus chapter 6, verses 14 to verse 25. Now, Ha Elohim, he placed Aaron or Haron, Aaron, in the role of Moses' prophet. So Moses is going to step, step to step to foul as a god, and we find this in the scripture that he was to be a god, a Elohim, a, a G, a god to foul, and his brother Aaron would be his prophet. So the Most High, the Holy Spirit, would speak to Musa, and Musa would communicate it to Aaron, and Aaron would speak on behalf of the God Musa. And, and see, a lot of the Christians, when they look over this, they, they kind of gloss over it. Though they read it there, they don't see the real significance. Like when Christ said, I have said ye are gods, all of you are children of the Most High. Isn't that interesting? We look at Egypt, they had gods. But now Moses would be a god to Pharaoh. He would be a god to their system of things. Well, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be even in these times that God, Ha Elohim, he intended to harden Pharaoh's heart. And we're still going to touch on which Pharaoh most likely this was so that Ha Elohim might show signs and marvels. Remember, this Sabbath is the Sabbath of, of, of Kanabe. Uh, of Cana the Galila, or Cana of Galilee, and the first Majumaria Tamrun of Jesus Christus that he showed by the will of his Christian of his mother. And there's a prophetic connection to that as well. Remember, Egypt is a symbolic type. A very important symbolic type. A lot of symbolic logic, verbal hieroglyphs, can be understood by studying Egypt. So in Exodus 7 and 3, now, Ha Elohim told how Aaron would cast down his rod and it would turn into a snake. And Aaron did so before Pharaoh. You might have seen some Hollywood versions of that, but it was very much more to it than just the special effects. Exodus chapter 7, verses 9 to 10. Now, Pharaoh, Pharaoh caused his magicians. So Pharaoh had magicians. He had these ones who, who had, you could say, supernatural occultic power. That they would do the same. But Aaron's rod, Aaron's rod, is swallowed up their rods. Or his wisdom, the wisdom of Jah Rastafari, swallows up all the wisdom of the New World Order, the Freemasons, the Illuminati, the, the white races, you know, white supremacy, the Gentiles. All of that, all that little magic, soothsaying, and all other kind of demonic entities, all that wisdom is swallowed up by the wisdom of Jah's rod. Exodus chapter 7, verses 11 to 12. Now, Pharaoh, or Pharaoh's, his heart now stiffened. His heart, he got, he got hard-hearted, Exodus chapter 7, verse 13. And we're going to pause right here because the main part of this um, parsha or this kufal, this portion from the kufale or the portions, this part mainly touches on and is going to address the plagues, the plagues that are going to fall or befall upon Egypt. So, brothers and sisters, Senbet, Salam, Shabbat, Shalom. There's more in this. Please study the truth for yourself and, and just take some time to even just get a basic familiarity um, with it. And um, we pray the King of Kings in the name and authority of Jesus Christos that peace reigns in your spirit, in your in your in your souls, your mind, and in your bodies, and that we come out of this spiritual Egypt as our ancestors came out of that Egypt by His will, in the name of the King of Kings, Kedemawi Haile Selassie, and His Christ. Amen and amen. Stay tuned, brothers and sisters, more to come. Shalom. Rastafari.